everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to ProMix Academy. It's your resident Reaper guru, Glenn Fricker, here on site. And what we're going to take a look at today is EQing in Reaper. And fortunately, it's a really simple thing to do. Uh, turns out Reaper has a very robust section of plugins already pre-installed. They're called the, the Rhea Plugins Suite. And uh, there's one, some of my absolute favorites. And the one plugin I use in the Rhea Suite more than anything else is the EQ. And it is just absolutely fantastic. And I've got it on my guitar bus here, and we're gonna take a look at buses at, at a future episode. Basically, this is a way for all my guitars to go to one track so they're much easier to control. And in fact, EQ. <laughs> Now, uh, this EQ that I'm using here, this is uh, just a, it's got four bands. And um, I don't know if we can add bands or not on this. Add band, yeah, we can add as many as we want. How cool is that? My The only thing I don't like is you have to switch pages here to get to the different controls. I, I'm not sure if you can just grab these. Oh, you, turns out you can't. All right. So each band has, you've got frequency, gain, and bandwidth, and then your type. You've got band, high, high pass, low pass, all that kind of crap. I'm gonna take you guys through it. High shelf and low shelf, let's start with that. Basically, uh, high shelf and low shelf are like your bass and treble controls on your home stereo. So that's a lot of mud. That's a high shelf there. Now the thing I love about the rear cue is got a frequency analyzer, and that definitely helps you pinpoint problem areas if you see something jumping out a little too much. Like, there's a lot of bottom end going on down here. So, usually what I'll do with guitars is I'll use what's called a high-pass filter. And that takes out all the extreme mud. Obviously, we don't want it going up that high. So, we're going to bring that down on rock guitars right around 90 hertz. Now, if we were to take that out, we disable that and throw on a low pass filter right about there. About 90 hertz. That's what we're getting rid of. Just kind of that crud there. And what that's going to do is actually leave room for, you know, the bass guitar, the kick drum, that sort of thing in a full mix. Pretty cool. All right, so that, that's the high pass, low pass, and then the high and low shelf. Um, band pass, let's see what this is. No idea. Oh man, what happened there? We're all up at 24 hertz. This is kind of suitable if you want to do uh, kind of like a telephone sound effect on a vocal or that kind of thing. Not really helpful for metal guitars, that's for sure. Unless you're going for like a special effect or something like that. Basically, it looks like it's a high pass and low pass shelf, or excuse me, a high pass and low pass filter put together. And um, a notch. This is for surgical use. If you find a frequency you really don't like, You can use that to great effect. Now, if you take a listen here, what's that sound like? That sounds like a guitar phaser pedal. We increase the bandwidth here. That's essentially what a phaser pedal does. Is It's a notch filter that takes out certain high frequencies to give it that sh kind of sweeping effect. Uh, not really helpful for this. I find this is great on snare drums for like ringing, pinging snares to get rid of some of that ring. And then, of course, uh, we're going to go with what we use most of the time, which is band. And this is where it gets interesting. Um, this is what you would call a parametric type EQ. What we're going to use this for is cuts and boosts. Um, and we're able to, we've got three controls here. The frequency obviously determines what frequency we're applying our changes at. See, that's pretty hissy there. Gain, obviously, if we're boosting or cutting. And bandwidth, how wide the cut is.
Now, where this is important is uh, when you're EQing, just a general rule of thumb is to use wide bands for boosts and narrows for cuts. That way you can get rid of annoying frequencies. But when you're boosting, you're doing a, a much more gentle type of boost. And uh, basically when I'm EQing like rock and metal guitars, uh, what I will do is um, I'll do some kind of an EQ curve like this. I won't do a lot of EQing. Like I said, I'll take out some of the crud. I'll take out some of the extreme top. And then um, I'll show you guys what I do. Usually I'm, and I'm, I find myself cutting right around four, four kilohertz as well, because that's kind of like the fingernails on a blackboard frequency. We're going to need this. I don't think we're going to need four here. I don't think we're going to need to need to take out an extreme top end at this point, but on, on number one here, let's do this as a high pass filter. We're going to want to take out things right around 90 Hertz. Now, if you see, we got the bandwidth. This is kind of making an adjustment. We're not only cutting the lows, but we're uh, boosting. And that's kind of a function of um, certain EQs, like two BQs, like a Poltec and one kind of thing, is if you play with their bandwidth controls, you'll get that. You'll get a cut and a boost right at the same time. And that can be very musical. But for, uh, for guitars, I kind of like things a little more surgical sounding. Yeah, you definitely don't want to go that far. So we want to just kind of get rid of some of the crap here. And punch in a note. Now we're going to do a band right in the 4K region. We're going to do a pretty narrow. We're going to listen for a really nasty buzzing frequency. Now that's just not pleasant at all. So we're going to cut that. And I'm actually going to use a high shelf here. And we're going to boost a bit at right around 10K, 10 kilohertz. You'll find that's where the air is on a guitar. You can see I'm adjusting the bandwidth here a little bit. So we can get a more gentle boost across more frequencies, or we can tweak it so it's a little more severe right at the 10K region. That way, right around here, we're not boosting up, you know, irritating frequencies. And as you can see, the frequencies drop off, start to drop off right around 10K, so we're kind of counterbalancing that a little bit. And if we punch it out, just added a little bit. And uh, we're gonna watch the mud zone as well. Right around 200 hertz, you can see right in this area here, maybe take a little bit out there. Now, this is gonna be somewhat narrow band as well. I don't want to affect the mid-range too much. There's not a lot going on in that 10K region. But there you go, that's basic EQ operations in Reaper. Um, that's how I kind of approach metal guitars. I only use maybe three or four bands on guitars. Generally, I find it's a great idea to get the sound as close to what you want right at the onset, right when you're recording. That way you don't have to make a lot of adjustments in EQ. You can just do a few minor tweaks and it should all be real gentle stuff. If you find yourself, you have to do massive EQ moves to get something to work right, chances are you probably should go back and re-record it but there you go there's some basic eq stuff these uh this eq will work great on guitars drums bass vocals you name it it's pretty much universal and i really like the interface it's a really great system to work once again if you want to get more information don't forget to download my cheat sheet or my drum recording guide and as always check out some of my premium lessons over at promixacademy.com i'll have some links in the description below thanks so much for watching and i am freaking out of here 